Today, I will describe two advanced field effect transistor types. One is using silicon on insulator, and the other uses the FinFET. In the comments below, I will post a link to an animation of the FinFET for you to view after you finish this video. We just went over three ways to control drain-induced barrier lowering as devices get smaller. The point I'd make about devices getting smaller is that they scale in all of their dimensions, which means that they get thinner as well. So the channel becomes thinner and thinner, giving more opportunity for leakage current through the body, directly between the drain and the source. This leakage current, of course, is undesirable. It is an elevation of off current, so we want to avoid it. So I'll describe here two approaches that are now being used for controlling leakage current. First, there is silicon on insulator. It's a thin film technology. The silicon itself is entirely thin and is on top of an insulating film. So you have the drain and the source pads, but you then have the gate region, which is the same thickness. And underneath it, you have silicon dioxide instead. So this is really a fabrication issue. How do you make it happen? And that silicon dioxide is first grown on a bulk silicon substrate. The skate region is always in some state of depletion because it's so thin that depletion is a significant portion of its thickness, and so it's referred to as partially depleted silicon on insulator. It does have a drawback. Electrons go through at pretty high speed because of the high electric field. They are accelerated to a very large terminal velocity. So there's a lot of impact ionization with silicon ions in the channel region. That generates excessive number of holes. If the gate is bias positive, they will accumulate on the backside here, and so you have this hole accumulation region, which is, by the way, electrically floating, right? Because you have oxide behind it, so dielectric. There's no ground now, as the body normally is in a larger scale MOSFET. The potential from the source over here to the body is actually negative because now the body is going to be at a higher potential, and so V sub SB is a negative number. And if you inspect equation 648, you'll realize that means that the threshold voltage goes down. That's referred to as the floating body effect. So in partially depleted silicon on insulator, there's been no shortage of effort on addressing that problem, and I'll get to where the solution really is these days. So the consequence of the reduction in threshold voltage is that your off current becomes too high. And so once again, you're back to having a problem of leakage current. You have a nice high on current, but now there's all this leakage current. So one earlier solution was to go with a thinner layer of semiconductor, in which case that channel region is fully depleted and you end up without having the impact ionization because the whole thing is in depletion now. So you don't have the high energy electrons careening across, uh, creating the excessive hole density. But that always in depletion, you avoid that floating body effect. You therefore avoid the reduction of the threshold voltage. And so that's what fully depleted silicon insulator means. And so you, you see these PDSOI for partially depleted silicon on insulator and FDSOI for fully depleted silicon on insulator. Let's do just a quick example here of a fully depleted silicon on insulator and FET. Pause the video for a minute and just read this question, especially this text down here. I'm going to throw in, just because uh, we haven't done yet this semester, a realistic problem that tends to happen. Pause and read. We have our standard specifications, the doping density of the semiconductor, the thickness of the oxide, and the thickness of the silicon layer, 50 nanometers. But we are adding in this interfacial charge, it's fixed, it's ions, so they can't move, they're, they're silicon atoms. They're at the interface, and there's a small amount of charge, the density is, is given here, 5 times 10 to the 11th times 1.6 times 10 minus 19 coulombs per square centimeter. This is believed to occur during fabrication while the semiconductor is being oxidized, while this oxide layer is being grown. It's a positive layer of charge because it's silicon ions. So we'll start off with just equation 522, right? We want to find the threshold voltage. Look at this as a MOS capacitor. 
you have a flat band condition, you have an oxide voltage, you have a surface potential at threshold, and they add up to give you the threshold voltage. That's where you start. We can find description throughout Chapter 5 of the flat band potential, oxide potential, and the surface potential. And remember, the flat band potential is the difference in the work functions between the gate metal and the semiconductor. And so I have that difference here, but I'm also going to offset it with the interfacial charge because that reduces the voltage further across the oxide. And the oxide voltage is the charge of the depletion layer divided by the oxide capacitance. Then there's the surface potential threshold. I rely on that expression. One way to rationalize this minus sign here is that the depletion layer that you get from oxide voltage, the depletion layer is negatively charged in a P body because the depletion layer is made up of acceptor ions. The interfacial charge is opposite in sign, it's positive. So whatever sign is here certainly needs to be opposite here. That's actually where you, I think the easiest way to rationalize that minus sign being present. Put in some numbers for some of this stuff. The work function of the metal soil side is just the electron affinity of silicon. Work function of silicon is that electron affinity plus the extra energy that gets you down to the Fermi level. And so that's why this parenthesis here is a little modified. I replace C oxide with the permittivity of the oxide divided by the, the thickness of the oxide. This middle expression here, the voltage across the oxide is the charge on the depletion layer divided by the oxide capacitance. That's equation 531. Take a minute and inspect that equation, and you'll see one difference between what equation 531 tells you V oxide should be and what I have here, and that is that in chapter 5, we agreed that the voltage across the oxide is the charge density times the depletion layer depth, W sub DEP, over the capacitance. Well, I'm replacing the depletion layer depth, W sub DEP, with the thickness of the silicon because the silicon is fully depleted. You can't have a depletion layer as thick as you would calculate with the expression in Chapter 5 for a depletion layer thickness. It is fixed at the thickness of the silicon, so that's why this change is made. Put some numbers in, and you get a threshold voltage of minus 0.146 volts. Now that's silicon on insulator. A second approach to controlling leakage current is the FinFET, and that's what's been commercially adopted since about the, the 22 nanometer node animation going here. You start off with a semiconducting substrate and you micro machine a different shape onto it. And so it has this fin. It's called a fin because it looks like a fin. And it's shaped like that. So the fin fet is intrinsically a three dimensional structure. It's only something that can be made by micro machining technology. And then you grow an oxide layer on it, trench oxide. Its purpose is to isolate the semiconductor from the gate, which is metal silicide, and wraps around in this manner. So this fin penetrates right through that gate. There's a uh, source and there's a drain, meaning that there has to be an oxide layer as well. So the question is, where is all this stuff? The oxide layer separates the metal silicide gate from the semiconductor. And then the source and the drain is on the opposite sides of this gate metal, just like in the MOSFETs we've been studying. So it follows the topology of a MOSFET, even though it doesn't follow the geometry of it. Now, and typically, actually, these fins are cut down, micro-machined down, etched down, to almost the, the level of this oxide. Still, the source and drain pads are on top of them. And that's done so that a strain can be added to the semiconductor. As I say here, that was just too hard to draw. But I have a YouTube animation coming up here. I'll show that to you in a minute. So it's often called a tri-gate because you have three surfaces. The, the gate wraps around the semiconductor three ways. We call it a tri-gate MOSFET because of that. It does a much better job of containing that leakage current because current is really contained to within the fin and it's always within the region of a gate so that any current you have passing is not leakage current. Leakage current would have to go a long ways down this fin 
maybe to get into the semiconductor substrate to come back up to the to the drain and that's not an easy path this is how we're doing it these days in the current technology nodes there's an emerging approach that's similar to this instead of a single fin uses nano wires to uh, create multiple gates in the same area and so replacing that single fin with say three nano wires three semiconducting nano wires like carbon nanotubes allows you to have three gates in the same footprint watch for what's called the gate all around fet all around because it goes around all four sides of, of that semiconductor you can watch for that to make an appearance sometime in the, in the future well I've told you everything I know about semiconductors and VLSI. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to some real experts. I'm going to stop talking for the rest of the semester, and I'm going to play you a short YouTube that illustrates the FinFET, and then we'll be done. And you can then watch a uh, interview with a person from a foundry about the latest technology node and how we're getting to it.